This year, two of the most exciting releases were within the Kawhi ES series. We have the ES520 today and the ES920. We're gonna be comparing them, looking at the features and figuring out which one might be right for you. Let's check it out. Hi, Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate all your support and we love to interact with you guys. Well, today we have a really exciting comparison because like I said in the intro, these have been two of our favorite releases this year um, that have come in at, at a relatively affordable price point. Um, 2020 has been a weird year where it took us a long time. We found out about a lot of product releases back in January at the NAMM show and it took six months to a year for it to actually show up um, because of complications with getting things manufactured in, uh, in China and Indonesia and then getting it over here to the US. So these products were announced quite a long, long time ago, but we've, we just got them into the store, um, both of them. We've had the 520 for a little bit, but the ES920 just came in very recently. Um, and it's, it's something that we've been waiting for because there's so many similarities between these two models. From, from the naked eye, they almost look identical. The, the biggest differen differentiation is um, the four band EQ that's gonna be on the 920 where this one does not have that. Um, but besides that, they almost look identical. Um, and so very easy to confuse if you're just looking at them. Uh, but there are some very unique differences between the two of them. And we wanted to go over that as well as play them so that you guys can hear to say, hey, is there a difference between these two? Um, right off the bat, um, my favorite difference between the two and why I really like the 920, um, it's, uh, it's gonna be in the action. So um, the action of your keyboard has a lot to do with how it plays, what it feels like. Uh, this one is gonna have the responsive hammer three action from Kawhi, which is a new action that they've, they made in the last year or so. But the big difference between this one and the responsive hammer two action, this is called the responsive hammer compact two action on the ES520. Uh, is counterweight. So um, in each keystroke, there's gonna be a counterweight which creates counterbalance while you're playing the instrument. And so the biggest difference you're gonna feel is how dynamic it is when you're coming back up on your keystrokes. Um, so if you're used to playing a grand piano or even an upright piano, you're really used to that weight being kind of a pivotal point when you're playing back and forth and, and really kind of the nuances and dynamic control you have of the instrument really is affected by how the keys respond, not only down, but on the way back up. And the ES920 does a great job of, of replicating that with that counterbalance. And I know Kawhi spent a lot of time and a lot of money and research and development into making that responsive hammer three action as an upgrade to the responsive hammer two. Um, so just right off the bat, that's something that I wanted to bring up. I know you guys can't feel these instruments, but as a player, as people who have played lots of instruments, who've come into our store and played them, uh, there is a, a very big difference that you feel in these two instruments. Um, also, the, the way that the, the instruments are sampled and modeled, so the Shiguru Kawai, the SKEX, is sampled and modeled on both of these, um, and the modeling software is a little bit different. Um, on the 920, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be the Harmonic Imaging XL, is what they call it, which has a 256 note polyphony, on the ES520, um, it's the uh, progressive harmonic imaging. Um, and so that is gonna be 192 note polyphony. So once you get up to the 100 and over 192 polyphony, um, that is a very quality instrument. And you'll, if you look at any kind of portable instruments, digital pianos, you'll realize that 192 is, is very acceptable for intermediate and advanced players, as well as beginners. But the 256 is the full range um, 256 polyphony, and that's basically how many notes can be held down um, or played or that sample can keep going at a time. So if you're holding the sustain pedal down and you've, you're doing runs and things like that, it will start to drop off after 192 notes on the 520 and then after 256 on the 920. Um, so very advanced um, instruments, both of these, but that is two of the very big differences between these two. Uh, there are about four more sounds on the ES920, so we will um, hear those uh, differences here in a second. Um, but there's, I'm gonna say 38 sounds on the ES920, there's 34 on the ES520. The weight difference is also very, very small. It's about five pounds. Um, this one uh, is gonna be 37 and a half pounds. This is about 32 pounds. Um, so really lightweight, easy to pick up and move around. Um, again, the, 
the primary differences are going to be in the way it feels and also uh, the polyphony and the, the modeling that it has. Um, there is also one huge difference in recording capability. So if you're someone who wants to go in and really kind of make recording your own from the unit, um, the ES920 has a couple more features for you. So not only can you record on a standard MIDI file, the SMF is what that abbreviation is. So if you're reading specs and you're looking at these two models, you might see SMF recording on the ES520. That is recording as a MIDI file, so it's saving the data that you are playing. So um, if you pull the MIDI file off of this and plug it into your computer with the USB drive, um, or if you're taking the recording straight plugged into your computer, um, it's going to read it as, as data and you'll have to assign an instrument to that MIDI um, file um, and usually use a program like Pro Tools or Logic um, or Ableton. On the 920, you can record not only with that standard MIDI file, but you can record in a WAV file format and an MP3 file format. And the nice thing about that is if you're someone who's on the go a lot and needs to be able to send you have a band or you have a worship team or you have a choir and you'd be able to send the mp3 which is recording the audio or a WAV file which is a higher resolution recording of that audio. If you need to send that very quickly on an email or send it from your phone to someone else's phone, this has that capability and uh, it's a lot quicker to move that data in a readable format to a phone or to a computer without the use of Ableton or, or any of your uh, audio workstations. Um, so that is a really nice feature. Um, it also has a lot more uh, storage, internal storage memory when it comes to recording. It has a two-track recorder, um, where this is just a one-track recorder on the 520. Um, you're also able to um, you're also able to uh, do a lot more with the rhythm section on the, on the 920. It has a hundred built-in uh, chord expressions, so you, uh, basically um, can play along to chords. Uh, and they're, and they're written out for you so you can play along with the melody with those chords. It's got a hundred of those, but also has a built-in accompaniment, which is a four instrument accompaniment, whole rhythm section on the ES920. The ES520 is not gonna have any of that. Um, so just a couple unique differences between the two. Uh, the, the, as far as audio in-outs and MIDI in-out, uh, it's, it's virtually the same on both of these. They both have two headphone inputs. They both have a, um, an audio out stereo audio in, they both have MIDI in and out. Um, both are Bluetooth compatible, so you can have your phone or have uh, an iPad or, or any device that, that can stream music either on YouTube or um, from your from a music library. You can stream that into these. Um, the speaker systems that are going to be playing that audio are going to be the same. So whether you're playing uh, the piano sample on here or whether you're playing music off your phone into this via streaming Bluetooth, um, the, the 40 watts of, of output power are going to be identical on these two models. So very similar looking, but in the inside there's some unique differences. Um, but yeah, let's check it out, let's listen to them, let's see if you guys can hear any differences between the two samples, between how they, they've done the, the harmonic imaging on the 920 versus the 520. Let's see if there's really a difference and you guys be the judge. Let's take a listen.
So something I noticed playing both of these models is there's definitely a difference in the feel. Um, and actually on the 920, it has the ivory key tops that are a little bit different and actually absorb a little moisture off of your fingertips. Um, that is uh, on the 920 only, it's the Kawhi um, ivory key tops that they, that they make. Um, it's different on that model than on the 520. Um, you also get the SK5 sample, the Shiguru um, SK5 model on the, uh, on the 920 when it's not on the, the uh, 520. So that's something that I did want to point out for you guys. Um, there's also some touch parameters that are on the 920, so you can adjust the feel a little bit more. There's 10 preset touch parameters on the 920. I did not see them on the 520. So there's are some things to be aware of when comparing these two models. Um, there's going to be a difference there as well as that responsive hammer three action, which has the counterweights and that counterbalance. Just really feels a little bit nicer to me than the ES520. Again, there is about a $500 difference in these two models. Um, I guess maybe $400. So this one comes out at about $15.99. This one's $11.99. Um, and so that is something to be aware of. Are these features stepping up to the 920? Is it worth spending a little bit extra? That's going to have to be up to you guys. Um, but I really did enjoy playing both of them today. I was thrilled when the 520 came in. If you haven't checked out that video, please do. We were so excited when we unboxed it and played it. I'm more thrilled with the 920. It's just another step up into a great instrument that I think can be versatile for a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced player, depending on your needs. Um, but really, you can't go wrong here. They're both great instruments. And be on the lookout, because we are going to bring in the ES110 and do a, a, a mod, or do a ES overview. Um, we'll be doing that in the future. So be on the lookout for that, because we'll compare all three of these models um, and really let you know what we think are the huge upgrades and is it worth it on the price for you guys. Again, we're Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com, where we have a chat agent, agent available there. If you have any questions about digital pianos, if you have questions about these ES series, we can answer them there. Um, if you have any questions about musical instruments in general, we hopefully can help you guys out. Um, we love all the support that you guys give us, and we really appreciate you guys checking us out. Again, please subscribe. For more content, we love to bring it to you guys. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.